All right, we're back. You wanna see those rims I got? Right after this intro. So we got some rims I'm really happy about. They're iconic. They're a uh, little narrower than I wanted, but the back spacing makes up for it. I'll explain that when we get to it. And uh, they're in exceptionally good condition considering their age. So uh, without further ado, here's what we got. Convo Pros by Centerline. Now these are dirty from sitting. They've been sitting in the guy's warehouse for who knows how long. But I polished up a little area. They shined up pretty nice. They've still got plenty of light scratches and whatnot that need to be removed. But these things are going to polish up beautiful. From the factory, these would be polished from this point out, including these rivet heads. And then the center section would be a satin finish from being just sanded as it spins, basically. So the lines go this way, but it's a sanded finish. Um, what makes these rims cool? Well, for starters, they're very iconic. These rims came out during the height of the Pro Street uh, trend, if you will. It's not really a trend, it's just a scene, but at the time it was being treated as a trend. So when you hear people, even myself, say something like Pro Street died, it never really went away. It died in the same way heavy metal died or punk music died or you know punk revival or whatever. It didn't really die, it's just mainstream media quit focusing on it. And uh, this was one of the stars of the show when mainstream media was focusing on it. So I'm pretty happy to have these. Uh, this is an old school rim, so it's a really goofy size. Here's the situation with the tire size. Now, I was looking for a 15 inch rim. This is actually a 13 and a half inch rim. I would, I'll save how to measure a rim properly for another video because there's a whole bunch of things to it and all these numbers on the tire size mean something. I'll go over that in another video. I've been doing this a long time so I know I measured it right. But these were a custom made racing wheel back in the day. So maybe somebody ordered them that with, I don't know. But what's also oddball about it, is the backspacing, and the backspacing is what are going to allow us to run this wheel um, in our truck and line it up exactly where I want to put it and still allow us to upgrade in the future if for some reason I tank taco one of these wheels somehow or they're not straight or for some reason there's something wrong with them or I just get the opportunity to put some real nice rims on them, I don't know. But here's the reason why that works. It's a thing called backspacing. Now, without getting too in-depth and really going into it, just know that backspacing is the measurement from this mounting surface right here to the back edge of the rim, okay? Now, the way you measure it, if there's no tire on it, it's a lot easier. You can just lay it on the ground and take your measurement. But we have a tire on it, so I have to find a straight edge and I have to locate it so that it goes across the back of the wheel on both sides evenly. So now that I know that's flat against there, then what I want to do is measure the distance, oops, there we go, measure the distance from the mounting flange and we have three and a quarter. Yeah, it's amazing, three and a quarter. So that three and a quarter inch backspace is what makes this wheel totally usable right now. And here's why. The wheels I would replace this with if I had to would be a 15 inch wide rim but the 15 inch wide rims come with a four and a half inch backspacing. So what that means is, this is a three and a quarter. So a four and a half is an inch and a quarter bigger. So what that means is, the tire will come out this way another inch and a quarter further back from this mounting surface. So an inch and a half difference in width and an inch and a quarter of it going back here means only half an inch of it will come off to the front side here. So normally, if you were just increasing this by a half an inch, the sidewall would just move out maybe about an eighth of an inch. But here's the thing. That's if we were putting a half inch out on both sides. If all we were doing was widening the wheel on the same tire without do, worrying about where the center location is, if you add a two inch wider wheel, let's say, than the one you're using now, what will happen is it'll come out an inch on either side and your sidewall will come out about a half an inch on either side. But because this is offset and an inch and a quarter is coming to this side and only a half inch to the front, quarter inch, I'm sorry, only a quarter inch to the front, I keep saying half, don't I? What's going to happen is this tire tread is going to move this way a little bit to compensate for the big change on this side and the tiny change on this side. So even though this would normally come out about an eighth of an inch at the sidewall, to compensate for that extra quarter inch of front face. The extra inch and a quarter back here is going to shift this whole tread over a little bit 
and it's also going to push this out probably about five eighths to three quarters of an inch inside. So all I have to do to be able to update to 15 inch wheels later is as long as I leave that extra space in here between my frame rail and the sidewall to account for this thing getting wider and when we do a rim switch, this front area is going to stay in the same spot basically or even pull in a little bit and give me a little more clearance to the outside. So that works perfect. Now I could have done that with other sizes but I wouldn't have the depth and that's why this is so cool. These wheels actually give me the depth I'm looking for here. Um, which is important because this depth from here to out here is again, it's only a quarter inch different than the 15 inch rim. So visually I'm giving up a quarter of an inch of depth to run this wheel instead of the 15. So honestly, the 15 might make the sidewall look a little less bulged, a little more straight up and down. It might look a little better, but it's not worth the extra expense of buying brand new 15 inch wide rims just because these are, you know, they'll look a quarter inch deeper. So it's not worth it for that quarter inch. So yeah, that's, uh, we'll call it there, I suppose. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. She'll shine up. Very happy to have these wheels. Uh, what we got to do now is we got to get these things under the truck so we can see what it looks like. So uh, I'm going to cut it there because it's a little long. I don't want to go past the 10 minute mark really uh, if I don't have to. So in the next video, we'll cut out the rear wheel well area so I can get one of these tires stuck up in there and then we'll see what this thing looks like mocked up with the tire under it. So uh, come on back for the next episode if you want to see that. That's going to be even better. It's going to be far more rewarding to see this under the truck. And then uh, we have some other stuff going on. We picked up an important engine part and we picked up uh, a new option for our rear differential. I probably will not be using the differential you saw me pick up in that other video. It's not straight. It needs work. That's fine. But I got something that's even better for even cheaper and we're going to go with that. So come on back. Check that out. Uh, for now, I guess, thanks for watching. Hey, please like, comment, subscribe, and share, and we will see you in the next one. Thanks again. See ya.